Hi everybody, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna be covering several different basic image processing techniques used for both image enhancement as well as upstream pre-processing functions that are often used for many different applications. We'll be covering quite a few topics, including arithmetic operations, thresholding and masking, and also bitwise operations. All of these are very fundamental to uh, many computer vision processing pipelines. And we've also included a couple of different uh, application examples so you can get a better feel for just how these techniques can be used in practice. So with that, let's uh, scroll down here and take a look at our first example. Uh, here we're reading in a color image and displaying it right here within the browser. And what we'd like to do is adjust the brightness of this image. So let's um, take a look at how we can do that. So in this section here, we're um, displaying the original image here in the center, and then we've adjusted the brightness uh, of the image, both darker to the left and brighter to the right. And so let's take a look at the code that accomplishes that. So we start here in the first line by creating this matrix, and we use the NumPy uh, ones method uh, to do that. And we're gonna pass in the shape of the original image here, and then also the data type, which is unsigned 8-bit. And we're going to multiply uh, that by 50. So now uh, the result of that is a matrix that's the same size as the original image, and it's got uh, pixel intensities of, of 50 uh, everywhere in the image. And so now we're simply going to use the OpenCV add and subtract functions to uh, add and subtract that matrix uh, from the original image, and then we're simply going to display those. So that's all that's uh, required to generate an image that's darker than the original and an image that's lighter than the original. So now let's talk about uh, how to change the contrast in an image. And uh, that's a little bit different because contrast is defined as the uh, difference in intensity values of the pixels within an image. And so that's going to require a multiplication operation. So we start here by creating two matrices. And uh, each of these is going to use the uh, NumPy ones function and create a matrix uh, the same size as the original image. And in both cases, we're going to multiply those matrices by a factor. So in this first case, it's a factor of 0.8. And in the next case, it's a factor of 1.2. So now these matrices contain floating point values that have been scaled by these two factors here. And on these next two lines, we're going to multiply those matrices by the original image. Uh, but note that there's a, there's a nesting here that's required. So the two matrices we defined above contain floating point values. So in order to multiply those by the original image, which was unsigned int, we're going to uh, first convert those to float and then do the multiplication here using uh, the OpenCV multiply function. And then after that, we're going to convert those back to unsigned int 8 bit. And so now we have those results here in these uh, two uh, variables, and we're simply going to display those. And you can see the results below. Uh, the original image is in the center here, the lower contrast image to the left, and the higher contrast image to the right. So you'll notice here that in the, uh, on the right-hand image, there is this um, odd color coding in here. Something's gone wrong. And the reason for that is because when we multiply the original image by this matrix that has a factor of 1.2 in it, uh, we potentially get values that are greater than 255. So if you look at the original image here, these clouds here were probably... Um, close to 255, some of them at least. And when we multiplied by 1.2, we exceeded 255. So then when we uh, attempt to convert those values to an unsigned 8-bit number, uh, rather than exceeding 255, they just roll over to some small number. And that's why these intensity values are now close to zero. And so that's the reason for the issue here. So let's take a look at how do we uh, remedy that. So if we scroll down to this next section, and take a look at that line of code here, what we can do is use the numpy clip function to first uh, clip those values to the range 0 to 255 before converting them to unsigned 8-bit. And now when you look at the right-hand image, um, it looks fine. And in fact, this portion of the image here has been uh, completely saturated. So some of these values here are right at 255. So they have really no information. They're the extreme highlights within the image. So that's a summary of brightness adjustment and also contrast adjustment. So let's continue on to the next section of the notebook, which covers image thresholding. Thresholding is a very important technique that is often used to create binary images that allow you to selectively modify portions of an image while leaving other portions intact. And we have a couple of examples below to demonstrate this, but first uh, just wanted to point out a few notes here in the documentation. I noticed that we're uh, specifying two different functions here. A threshold and adaptive threshold. Uh, so just taking a look at the threshold function here to see how this works. 
It takes as input a source image and then a threshold value between 0 and 255 and then a max value for the uh, binary map and then a type of thresholding that we're going to perform. And in all of our examples below, we're going to be using a, a binary threshold. So the idea here is that whatever threshold you specify, uh, pixels in the original image that are below this threshold will be set to 0 and pixels that are above that threshold will be set to 255. And so the result will be a binary map that contains either zeros or intensity values of 255 or whatever you had uh, set the max value here to, which is typically 255. So let's take a look at the adaptive threshold function. It also takes a source image, uh, a maximum value for the binary map, and then a method type to perform the adaptive thresholding, and also a threshold type, which is the same uh, type of input as uh, we had up here in the uh, first function. And then also a block size and a constant value here. Both of these are used um, by the adaptive method algorithm. Uh, basically, the block size is an indication of the pixel area that's considered when computing the uh, adaptive threshold spatially across the image. So there's a lot of detail in here, and uh, we simply wanted to include this for reference and then uh, to show you some examples below. So let's take a look at the first example here. So here we're reading in an image, uh, which is a photograph of a building with uh, lots of windows and a geometric structure. And uh, we're going to uh, call the threshold function and pass it to uh, that image, and then uh, give it a threshold of 100 with a max value of 255, and then specify um, this flag here to indicate that we want a binary uh, map. And what's returned from this function is the uh, binary image. Uh, this return value here uh, is not important at this point, so uh, it's this argument here that contains the actual binary uh, map. And so we're simply going to display that below, uh, both the original and the thresholded image. And you can see that there's an opportunity here for you to uh, use this uh, map as a way to selectively uh, process certain parts of the image. So let's take a look at a more concrete example uh, down here below. Suppose you were interested in building an application that could uh, read and decode uh, sheet music, which is very similar to optical character recognition, where the goal is to recognize characters in uh, text documents. In this case, you'd be trying to recognize musical notes uh, for the purpose of digitizing uh, that information. So in the example below, it's easiest to actually start off with uh, talking about these two images here, and then we'll come back up and, and talk about the code. So over here on the left is the original uh, photograph of some sheet music, and you can see that it's um, kind of dark here in the lower right-hand corner, uh, clearly not a white background, uh, but the notes are fairly well-defined. They're all very dark black, uh, which looks good. And the idea here is that we'd like to perform thresholding on this image to achieve a binary map, uh, similar to the one shown here to the right. So just taking a look at the dark values of all these notes and the musical notation, it looks like perhaps the intensity values of all these black areas might be below 50, for example. They all look pretty black. Uh, even some of these up in here look fairly black. So if we um, create a binary map with a threshold of 50, and we're hoping that we would be able to isolate all of this important information. And the image to the right here uh, was actually produced with a threshold of 50. And the result is rather surprising because uh, notice that there's no information up here in the top portion of the image. Uh, that would mean that the intensity values of all these black notes are actually above 50, uh, which isn't uh, very intuitive because they look rather dark. So that's just one example. So let's go back up here and take a look at the code that uh, produces these plots. So here we're just reading in the, um, the original image here. And then we're going to uh, call the threshold function, passing it the original image, a threshold of 50 a max value of 255, and then a flag here indicating that we want to produce a binary map. And so what we get back here is the thresholded image, and this is what is actually displayed down here to the right. Uh, but there's some additional code here. So there's another thresholding call here, and this time we're going to pass it a higher threshold of 130 with the hopes that we can uh, extract more of this information up here in the top of the image. And then finally, we're going to call the adaptive thresholding function and um, specify the type of uh, thresholding algorithm and the fact that we want to create a binary map and then some settings here for the algorithm. And, uh, and then we're going to display all four of these uh, below. So you can see the first two uh, here that we've already talked about, but let's scroll down here and see the next two. 
So you can see that the one at the lower left here that was produced with the global threshold of 130 did a better job of isolating uh, the musical notes here in the top portion of the page, but uh, that threshold was far too high in order to accommodate the lower portion of the page. So what's going on there is that these uh, dark values on the page, these, this shadow essentially, is actually uh, lower than 130. So as a result, this, this whole portion of the page is just blacked out. So neither of these global thresholds, 50 or 130, do a very good job. And you could actually experiment with other thresholds and find out that there's not going to be a single global threshold uh, that's going to do um, very well in this situation. So notice that the plot at the lower right here uh, that was produced using adaptive thresholding is much better. This is a very good example of how you can uh, take an image that's um, uh, pretty challenging and has several dark areas here and actually isolate uh, just about everything you want to in the image. So we simply wanted to point out the importance of uh, thresholding and in particular adaptive thresholding. And so now let's move on to the next section of the notebook which covers bitwise operations. So here in the documentation section, you can see that we have uh, four different functions, bitwise and, or, XOR, and not. And here we're showing an example of the bitwise and. It takes uh, two input images. Uh, these can actually be the same image, uh, but they don't have to be. And then it takes an optional mask. And the mask specifies which portion of these two images the logical operation applies to. So let's take a look at this uh, example down here. We're reading in uh, two different images. These are both uh, grayscale binary images that we're going to perform these operations on. And um, let's uh, just see how that works. So we'll start with the um, bitwise AND operator here. Uh, so in this case, we're um, passing in the image of the rectangle and the image of the circle. And then we're indicating the mask is none. So we're simply going to do a bitwise AND comparison between these two images. And the value returned from that comparison uh, will be uh, 255, or white, if the corresponding pixels in both images are white. So in this case, the result will be just this uh, left side of this half circle, since that's the only region in both images where the pixels are white. So now let's take a look at the bitwise OR. Um, operation. In this case, the return value from the operation will be white if the corresponding pixel from either image is white. And so in that case, we get the entire uh, left side of the rectangle, which is white, and then the uh, right-hand side of the circle. So now let's take a look at the XOR operator. And in this case, we're passing at the same set of arguments. The operation is simply different. And the exclusive OR works as follows. It'll only return a value of white if uh, either corresponding pixel is white, but not both. Uh, so this is um, the result that you get here. So that's a summary of those uh, three functions. So now let's take a look at an application using um, bitwise operations and uh, binary maps. So in this example here, we're interested in manipulating this uh, Coca-Cola logo. And we're going to start with a logo and also uh, what we call a background image here, this colorful checkerboard. And we'd like to uh, achieve this result to the right. So essentially being able to display a background image behind the white lettering and have it show through. So that's the goal. And we're going to go ahead and proceed through this notebook uh, to see how that's done. So first down here, we're going to read in what we call the foreground image, which is the Coca-Cola logo itself. And uh, we're going to display that in the browser here. And then uh, further down here, we're going to do the same thing with the uh, background image. Uh, in this case, there's a little bit of extra code up here in order to make sure that that uh, image is the exact same size as the Coca-Cola logo. So as we've seen before in a previous video, um, we're making use of the OpenCV resize function here to accomplish that. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, create a couple of masks from the Coca-Cola uh, logo. So in this top portion here, we're going to um, pass in the logo here to CVT color, convert it to gray, and then use the OpenCV threshold function to create a binary mask from this uh, grayscale image. And we're going to call that image underscore mask. And we're displaying that down here. So this is only going to contain values of 0 and 255. And then we're going to perform a similar operation down here 
uh, but not using the threshold function, although we could have. We could have used the threshold function down here and specified a uh, threshold binary inverse mask, but um, instead we can just simply call the bitwise not function on the image mask to return the inverse mask. And so you see both of these uh, masks displayed here in the browser, and now we're going to make use of those uh, down here below. So now in this section, we're going to do a bitwise AND on the background image with itself, but using the image mask. So this uh, bitwise AND operation is going to perform a bitwise AND between uh, the corresponding pixels between these two images, which is the same image, but it's only going to apply it um, to the mask, which is the white lettering in this case. And so that's the result we get. Everything else is going to be zero, and we're going to get uh, just the colors showing through in the logo. And then uh, we need to do a similar operation on, on, the, um, on the logo itself, which is image underscore RGB. And we're going to do a bitwise and operation on, uh, on that and pass it the inverse mask. And that's going to allow us to only show the, um, the red foreground and everything else is going to be um, black. And so now you can see that if you just added these two images together, the blacks sum to zero, and what you get is um, the following result. So we thought that was an interesting um, way to demonstrate how you could use uh, binary maps and uh, thresholding and logical operations to uh, accomplish something like this. So we covered a lot of material in this video, and just keep in mind that all of this is very fundamental to uh, many different image processing and computer vision pipelines, and we'll continue on in this course with a little more focus on actual applications uh, now that we have some of this uh, basic material under our belts. So uh, thank you, and uh, we'll see you next time.